Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect, and before we begin, we all need to understand this. As of recording this video, there is no easy way to cut out hair from a busy background. But the good news is, it's not impossible. We can definitely do it no matter how difficult or crowded the background might be. Since we will be painting and creating hair in the process, I would highly recommend using a Wacom tablet. This will help you not only work way faster, but also in creating realistic hair by taking advantage of pressure sensitivity. Trust me guys, it's not that hard, just five simple steps. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the magical land of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the tutorial, you know what to do, check the links in the description. Now please keep in mind for these kind of work, we need to have some time in hand. Now to begin with, step number one is making a selection using the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, this is actually a starting selection. On the hard edges, we will be on the edge, but on the hair, we will stay a little inside. So let's go ahead and select the pen tool. Here it is, let's select that. Now let's zoom in, start from one corner, click to make a point, click and drag to make a curve, right? You can always hold the control or command and play with the handle to match with that of the edge. This gives you a very clean edge. And by the way, if you want to learn how to use the pen tool, you can watch this video. Now, I've already created the path for you so that you don't have to wait through the entire process. Now, as you can see, we have already created the path in here. And when it comes to hair, we have stayed a little inside. And when it comes to other hard edges, like these flowers, we have been on the edge. Now I know this flower is a little out of focus, but we are still on the edge. We can blur the edges later. Don't worry about that. Now, once you have finished your path, you can always go to the Paths tab and rename it. By default, it will be Work Path, but rename it. I have renamed it to Subject by double-clicking on it and just rename it. That way, it saves the path. Now, you can hold the Control or Command, click on the thumbnail to make a selection out of it. Or the other way is, once you have finished creating the path, you can always right-click on it and choose Make Selection. It does the exact same thing. Make sure Feather Radius is 0 pixels. Hit OK. Now get back to layers. Now click on the mask button with the selection active. Now we have a mask. Now this is not perfect, but keep in mind, this is perfect around the hard edges. We need to blur it a little bit, but apart from the hair, this is perfect everywhere else. Now it's best to put a background just for reference. Since this is a bright image, we're gonna put a black background. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Now inside of that, choose black. Hit OK and we need to place it beneath the subject layer. Let's name the subject layer, subject. There you have it. Now let's work on the hair. Now it's time for us to create some hair brushes inspired from this image. And here's how to do it. So let's zoom in and turn off the mask momentarily by holding the shift key, click on the mask to turn it off. So first of all, we need to create a single hair brush, right? Now, to paint hair properly, of course, you can create a new layer. And this is just for painting here and there. Now, let's choose the brush, the brush tool right there. How do you want single hair to be? So, first of all, let's make the size a little smaller. I'm going to go for a 4 or 5. This is okay. And we'll try painting some hair next to the hair to see how well it matches. So, this is not matching at all. We need to customize that a little bit. So, let's go to Window and then brush settings. To make the brush realistic, we need to set some settings to pen pressure. And that's where the advantage of a Wacom tablet comes in. Because if you're using a mouse, it's either clicked or not clicked, on or off. It's either painting or not painting. There's nothing between those. There's no shades of gray. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say. So with this, I can set opacity to pen pressure, which means the harder I press, the more opaque it's going to be, the lighter I press, the more transparent it's going to be, making it more realistic. Now, of course, you can use the fade feature with the mouse, but honestly, that's not very realistic and it can be time consuming. So if you're using a mouse, I'm going to show you what to do, but it's always best to invest in something like this. I'm using right now a Wacom Intuos Pro. Now, all you got to do is to check transfer. Now inside of transfer, set the opacity 
to pen pressure. Set the control to pen pressure. We don't want any jitter here. You can also set the flow to pen pressure as well. You see how the edges become more natural. Now let's try painting a hair. So with white color, we'll do that with white. Let's see how natural this looks. Yeah, it looks fine, but it's not getting thinner around the edge. And we can easily do that with shape dynamics. So we can set the size to pen pressure as well. So let's go to shape dynamics and let the size be controlled by pen pressure. And now have a look. Now when I draw the hair, let's go back a little. Erase all of that. Now, see, it's more natural, right? It's getting there. I'm liking this. Now, if you want the hardness of a brush to be increased a little bit, let's go to the brush tip shape and you can increase the hardness a little bit. Let's see how that does. That is good too. Do you want it soft or do you want it a little hard? Completely hard won't look nice. So I'm going to keep it at about 35%. That's okay. So now we have a single hair brush and we need to save it. So click on the grid right there and we need to choose new brush preset and let's save it hair single we need to choose capture brush size in the preset so it's always set to four you can always change it here and there but by default it will be four include tool settings color is not important hit okay now we have the brush hair single now we need to put it inside our own group so let's create our own group let's collapse everything first to make things clear you can click on this gear right there i'm so sorry Click on the gear in the corner and then choose new brush group. Now let's name this hair brushes Pix Imperfect. Hit OK. Now we're going to put this brush hair single to inside this group. Time for us to create one more brush with multiple hair. Let's collapse this and let's delete this layer. Let's create a brand new layer. Now in here, you're going to choose again the soft round brush and just make dots according to the hair and that's what i mean when i say inspired by this hair so we're going to zoom in on one particular area where we have a regular density of hair maybe this area or let's choose a nice area this seems to be nice now according to how opaque thick or thin the lines are we are just going to make some dots which are equidistant or a little bit spread out to each other so take the brush make sure the color is black on a brand new layer we are doing this now make sure the flow is somewhere about at 20 percent that's okay or let's go for 10 percent now let's create a dot exactly to the thickness of the hair right here that's it just one dot right now since this hair is very opaque very bright we are making the dot darker. The brighter it is, the darker you make it. Now let's create one more here. Not as dark, but a little dark, just like this. Now let's create a dot right there, a little light one. This is okay. Now we are just creating dots here and there randomly. It's gonna be very bright. Probably one more right here. Or how about this area? Now you can always customize things later i'm going to show you how to do that let's go for this one let's go for one in the middle or somewhere about this area and one here all right now we have something to start creating our brush with so let's first of all set the background to white so that we can clearly see what's happening so with the subject layer selected just above it we're going to create a solid color adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon choose solid color and this time, let's choose white to see what's happening right here. So this is the base of the brush. We can take the brush. And as you can see, the points are very close to each other. So this is going to be a close knit brush. Now let's delete. I think this is very thick. So I'm going to erase it a little bit. Erase this a little bit from there. There you have it. Now let's define this as a brush. And how can we do that? Well, simple. So with the rectangular mar marquee tool right up there, let's make a selection of all of this. Now let's go to edit and then define brush preset. And we can name this hair close. Hit OK. Now we have that brush. 
press Control or Command D. Now it doesn't look like hair at all. It just doesn't look right, right? We need to make it work. Let's go to Window and then choose Brush Settings. Now in here, first of all, we need to decrease the spacing because right now it has a lot of space between the dots. So let's decrease it to the point where it begins to join. All right, 5% or 4% is okay. Now again, transfer, we need to check that. Control, pen pressure, flow control, pen pressure, both opacity and flow at pen pressure. Let's shake, check, sorry, shape dynamics too. Let's set the size to pen pressure as well. Seeing how natural this looks right now. Angle is fine, you don't have to touch any of that. Now, let me show you an interesting stuff. See how natural this is. See the hair. That's why I'm saying it's not possible with the mouse. Now, if you want to do it with the mouse anyway, you can set the transfer to fade and the flow to fade as well and shape dynamics to fade as well. So you might have to give the fade a little number. So let's give it 200. So after 200, it will fade or after 400 or 1000, whatever number there is, it's going to fade. You can also give shape dynamics a number that way. You can do that, but that's not going to be awesome. Or let's give this 400. All right, so 400 looks good. Let's give this 400 here as well. Let's give the shape dynamics 400 here. So yeah, you can do this with the mouse, but it's always going to be this way, big, and then it's going to go small. So that's the way it is. If you want to do it with the mouse, it is possible, but it's going to take you a while. Let's go back to pen pressure here. Let's go back to transfer and here as well. Let's set everything to pen pressure. There we have it. Look at the hair. So we can create some pretty nice hair just by painting with that. And now we also have the single hair. Now, before we move forward, let's save this as well. Click on that grid and let's click new brush preset. Capture brush size, include tool settings, hair close final. This is the final one with all the settings put in. Hit OK. Now we have it. Now let's see hair close final. Let's also put it inside the hair brushes. Fix imperfect. Now we need one more, just one more. The individual hairs are going to have a little more gap between them. So now let's delete this layer. Let's create a brand new layer. Now we can turn this white off and move to some other area of the image where we can create some gap. So now let's go back to the soft round brush again. And similarly, we'll do the same thing. But this time, keep in mind, we'll have some gaps. We can actually turn the white on and guess it. Now that we have an idea of what we want to do with it. Let's create one here. Let's create one there. All right, let's create one up there. There you have it. This is something. All right, we need to be as random as possible here. So this is wide enough. You can create more dots if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at that. This is enough. Now let's select this area, edit. Define brush preset. There you have it. Now, hair, let's name it wide, far, apart, whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to name it wide. Okay. Now we have something. Let's set the same settings. Go to window and then brush settings. In here, we're going to set first of all inside the brush tip shape 4% spacing. Let's get back to shape dynamics and set the control to pen pressure. Let's get to transfer and set these controls to pen pressure as well. So opacity and flow both to pen pressure. Now let's paint with the brush and see how it paints. Yeah, it paints pretty nice. See that? Right? Right now the flow is at 10. Let's increase it. There you have it. So this is a wider one. And now let's save it. Click on the grid right there, new brush preset. Hair wide final with all the settings. Hit OK. Now we have this. Now, before we move on to the next step, let me show you a couple tips. You don't have to create a lot of hair brushes. You can actually customize this brush to look a little different so that all of the areas don't look the same. Here is how. Inside the brush tip shape, if you want to change the brush just a little bit, 
just change the angle. Have a look at this. See how the angles and the patterns of the brush are changing? Just like 3D. It's fun. So if you're bored with something, you can move to a different angle like this. I'm liking this angle right now, right? You can change the angle to something like this if you're painting some other areas, right? So keep on changing the angles for different areas. Now that we have created the brushes, we are ready to move to the next step. By the way, if you are a Patreon member for Piximperfect, you can download all of the brushes that we created for this tutorial. Please check the link in the description. Step number three is refining the hair inside the mask. So first of all, let's delete both of these layers. So layer one and the color fill layer and let's turn on the mask. Now we need to use these brushes that we just created to bring back some of the hair naturally. So take the brush, white as the foreground color. And first of all, let's choose the hair close one, the final one with all the settings in there. Now let's go to these areas and all we got to do is to paint back in the hair. Now we can increase the flow to 100. But it's not doing anything. You know why? Because it's destroying the image. Let's go back. It's painting white over the image. We don't want that. We need to select the mask and then do it with white. Foreground color white and now paint back in the hair. See how nicely it's doing? Now by default, the flow is 10 because when we were creating the brush, we had set the flow to 10. It's also essential for some of the other areas to create that fill. But if you are creating the outer areas, increase it to 100. Now, let me give you a tip. If you want to see up to which extent you need to go, you can click on the mask, open up the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and then make sure properties is checked. In the mask properties right there, just decrease the density to see how far you can paint, right? So with the density decreased, you can actually see where you can paint. So I'm gonna keep the density at about 76 for now, just to see where I'm painting and just paint back in some of the hairs. We don't need to do it excessively, and by the way, as you are painting, we cannot paint in all directions easily. If you want to rotate your canvas, you can hold the R key. This takes you to the rotate tool. You rotate it accordingly. And then when you release the R key, it gets you back to the brush tool. Isn't that fantastic? If you don't get back to the brush tool, just select the brush tool. As easy as that. Now, whenever you want to reset it, hold the R key again, click on reset view and it resets that for you. Now we're going to speed up the process so that you don't have to wait through it all. Let's begin. Keep in mind, anytime you want some variety, you can always open the brush settings, go to window and then here you can choose brush settings. It can be open right here and then you just have to move the angle. See, it changes the brush a little bit. You don't have to be always so straight. You can be a little random here and there. So let's say you went a little random here, random there. In this area, as you can see, if I turn off the mask, it's right at the edge. So what I would do, I would push the hair a little inside, push the mask a little inside first. So we can always take the lasso tool and start from here. Right. I'm just pushing it inside so that we can paint back in the hair. Right. And fill that area with black. Black is the foreground color. Alt backspace or option delete. Now we can easily take back the brush and just fill that area in. Now keep in mind the mask is selected and the color is white. Now this area has a little too extra hard edge so you can change the color to black and just erase a little bit from this area and then paint again with white. Now if you want to see more you can always go back to the properties and decrease the density even more to see what area you need to paint. Now we didn't need to paint that area so what I'll do what I'll do is I'll take a brush, a soft round brush and erase the extra area so that we can paint back in with the hair. Shouldn't have been so close. But anyway, we'll just paint all of that back in. I'm just erasing the extras. All right. Let's get back 
to the brush, the hair brushes, the close one. So inside of the hair brushes, Pix Imperfect Hair Close Final, and let's just paint these areas back in with white. White as the foreground color. Now to add more reality to it, you can also incorporate the white brush. So here, this was close and this was white, hair white final. So let's put it inside of the hair brushes, Pix Imperfect. And now let's choose the hair wide final. All right, just for some areas, it's gonna be used later for painting, but for now, not so many places, it's fine. Let's go back to the hair close final and increase the flow. The default was 10, that's why again and again when we choose the brush, it is 10. If you wanna change the default, Set it to 100, let's go back to the brush settings and we're gonna create a new brush preset which is hair close final with flow 100. So you can create ones with flow 10, 20. If you really wanna make your work faster, you can create those, but anyway, it's okay for me. For this area again, I'm gonna go back to the brush which was hair wide final. Let's go back to hair close final, flow 100. Let's have a look at the mask up until now. So we can open up the properties, increase the density and see how nice the mask is. Of course, there's a lot of work we need to do. This is just the beginning, but it's way better, right? Now let's get back to decreasing the density, 75%. Now get back to the brush and let's paint the rest of the areas. From time to time, you can always turn off and see what areas you need to paint. Now you don't have to get back all of those hairs, it's not necessary. So of course you're gonna make some compromises by not selecting all of the hair. But if you want, you can always paint them later. And anyway, nobody's gonna know after we do the composite that which hair is real, which hair is fake, and which hair you have not selected. It's not about accuracy, it's about making it realistic. Now, as you can see, we have refined the hair in the mask with multiple hair brushes. So if we zoom in, first of all, let's go to the properties of the mask and then increase the density. A basic mask is done, but we still need to work on it. Now, the next step would be, you can choose the single hair brush, hair single, and then just draw a couple hair here and there inside of the mask. Of course, we will be painting hair on top of that later, but for now, let's just work on the mask. See the mask right there. See how realistic this looks right now? Of course, there's so much more work to do. But even if you have a look at this one, see how nice this is. Now we need to paint hair on top of that and we need to blur things out. But right now, it looks awesome. Now we have finished refining the mask and let me show you the result. If we simply increase the density to 100, you'll be able to see how amazing the mask is. Have a look at from this side. So every random hair randomly we just painted with a single hairbrush. Have a look, most of the work we did with a single one and for the fuzzy areas or the areas you wanna fill, you can do it with multiple hairbrush as we did right there. But if you have a close look, something just doesn't look right. You know, uh, something doesn't look right. Can you guess what it is? 
Look at it closely. Look at this area specifically very closely. Something just doesn't look right. The hair looks beautiful. The masking looks amazing. But what is wrong with this area? Tell me. Have a closer look. If I turn off the mask, look, this area is out of focus and blurry. But when we created the mask, the hair is so detailed. That cannot happen, right? This brings us to step number four, which is blurring the edges according to the depth of field. Now, in this step, we will just be blurring the mask. We won't touch the image, just the mask. Now, before moving forward, since we took a lot of time to create this mask, why not save it? So, hold the control or command, click on the mask to create a selection out of it. And then let's save it by going to select and save selection. We can save this as subject hair mask and we can save it in a new channel. So anytime you want to access it, let's press control or command D to deselect that. If you modify this and you want to go back to this mask, you can always go to channels. It will be here, subject mask, subject hair, as you can see. All right, let's come back to this. It's time for us to blur it according to the depth of field. So simply choose the blur tool from here. You can increase or decrease the strength if you want to. So I'm going to keep it at about 50 and start the blurring process. Keep in mind, we are blurring the mask, not the subject. According to the depth of field, we don't need to blur too much. Just a touch. Let's get the strength to about 30%, not 0, 3, 30. All right, let's blur them out. You can momentarily turn this off and on to see how much they were blurred. Turn this off, turn this on. Yeah, that seems to be about right. Look now how realistic it looks. Let's turn this off. These areas were absolutely blurred. So we can blur them out as well. Now keep in mind these flowers were in focus, so don't blur that area. Be very careful here. Now have a look at these flowers. If I turn off the mask, have a look the edges were soft. So now we need to blur this as well. Look how natural this looks right now. Now some of these areas will be in focus. Let's look at these. Some of these areas as well will be in focus. Just the other areas. All right. Now let's have a look at the top. These areas are in focus. These areas as well in focus. These areas are a little blurred. So we can actually just zoom in and blur this area out just a touch like this. Let's turn this on. Yes, everything else is in focus. Now we have an even better mask. The next step is where the magic happens. And therefore, step number five is painting additional hair. You can get as much creative as you want and create as many hairs as you desire. So let's go ahead and create some hair. Now for this step, you don't have to be accurate and refer the original image again and again, but if you want to, you can. But on the other hand, you can go creative and paint the hair according to your taste. So I'm just gonna go back to the brush and first of all, choose my favorite one, which is hair single. And let's create a brand new layer. Click on the new layer button and let's name it hair one and number this. You might have to create separate layers. Now with the brush selected, make sure you're able to sample the hair. If you're not able to sample the hair color, you can go to the eyedropper right there and just make sure sample all layers or sample current and below is selected. And then five by five average is fine. Now let's get back to the brush. You can also decrease it to three by three. Let's get back to the brush and then just paint additional hairs. Take a sample of the hair color nearby and paint it. That's it. Wherever the hair is originating from, so if it's starting from here, take a sample from there, just like so. And you won't be disturbed by anything. You can just paint as many as you like. Now, if you're looking for inspiration, you can, of course, hold the shift key, turn this off and see how this is and follow that pattern if you wish to. See that? Now we can follow that pattern. Also what you can do, you can decrease the density just to see how the hair is, just to take a reference and from there, just paint. Let's get back to the hair layer and then take a sample and paint. Now, once we have done this, refer it again and maybe you wanna add some blur to it. Depending upon how much blur 
there was in the original one. So you need to look at the depth of field and accordingly add some blur if you want to. So let's go to the blur tool and decrease the strength to 20%. That's all right. And just adding a tiny bit of blur here and there. All right, just to make it look realistic. So this is hair one. You can create one more layer, hair two. I'm having it separate so that if you want to change anything later, having different hair layers for different areas, it's going to be more convenient and keep things organized. Now let's look at the depth of field. So this is actually very sharp. We don't have to blur it too much, but this area might need a little bit of blurring. So we'll take the blur tool, maybe blur this area just a bit, just that area. All right, let's get back to the brush. Now it's a good idea to create a new layer and call it hair three. Again, this is just for organization. Let's see how the hair is in this area. So it's mostly folded and a couple of hairs on the outer side. Simple, we can create something like this. So the top area has been taken care of. Let's look at the side area. This area is gonna be a little blurry and most of the areas we have actually created it with a mask and we have to paint over the mask, that's fine. But for this area, let's create one more layer and let's name this hair four because we might have to blur this area. I think we have done this area pretty well, but still let's blur it out. So with the blur tool, let's increase the strength to 50% and blur it out. Just these extra hair here and there. Let's go to hair three and blur these two hair. And there we have it. Now down here, it's gonna be a little tricky. Let's create a new layer called hair five. Let's refer the original. So there's a lot of fringes in there that we need to create and most of them are in focus, no problem. So we'll go back to the brush and creating fringes is very easy. If you're using a tablet, just let your hand go wild, that's it. Take a sample and let your hand go wild. And let's reset the view. And there we have it. It looks fantastic. And it seems like we are done. The five steps are over, but we might have to make some corrections still. So if we go back to the mask and first of all, increase the density, as you will notice, some parts of the hair are pink. Why? Because while we were painting on the mask, painting hair inside the mask, we painted a little bit on the background as well. And the background has pink. So how do we take care of that? No issues. We just need to create a layer on top of it. And now when we take a brush, whatever we do, whatever we paint will be painted all over, right? What if you want to limit it just to the subject? Simple, create a clipping mask. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two. See this arrow right there? It means that it is now a clipping mask. Now you can just take a sample of this color and paint in. Take a sample and just paint over those areas which are pink. Take a sample and paint. Take a sample and just dab. You can actually decrease the flow so that it doesn't make it absolutely flat. Now let's paint over these areas as well. Now if you just wanna change the colors and maintain the texture, you can create one more and Clip that as well by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the line between these two and change the blend mode to color. That way you only change the color. So you don't have to worry about it making it flat. See, we are taking away those pink areas. And there we have it. Let's look at all over the place. Yeah, it's fine. Have a look at the mask. Tell me this is not an awesome mask. Look at this. The hair is so nicely selected. And let me show you the original image so this is the original image and see how busy the background was it was actually impossible to select it but if you give it some time if you paint your own hair and if you have some patience well we can actually do it pretty easily now you can change the background to anything you want maybe a solid color or another image 
your choice. So that's how to mask hair from an extremely busy background. All you need to remember are the five simple steps. Step number one, using the pen tool, make a selection, make a starting selection. And on the hard edges, stay on the edge. And when it comes to hair, stay a little inside. Step number two, create hair brushes based on the hair. Create a single hairbrush, create one which is close together, create one which is further apart. So three brushes are more than enough. If you want to create more, you can. And to customize the brush with multiple hair, you can always change the angle. Step number three is refining the hair in the mask. So using the brushes that you created, go to the mask and just paint back in the hairs with white. Step number four is blurring the hair in the mask according to the depth of field. Now, you might not need to do this step if everything is in focus with your image, but if it has a shallow depth of field, if some parts of the hair are out of focus, you might have to blur it out inside the mask with the help of the blur tool. The last step and the most magical one, step number five is painting additional hair. So using again, those three brushes, usually the single one the most, or the single hair one, just paint hair. Now you can create different hair layers if you want to. You can just organize them if you want to. And if there's a need, you might have to blur out certain areas based on depth of field. So that's all for this video. I hope this tutorial helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks a lot for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.